So utilizing your system, I'm sure everybody knows how to hook up. Everybody knows how to uh, gauge up on the system and uh, place your probes, do all your probe placement, uh, get your thermistors in place and everything else. What we're going to look at today is actually profiling the system. And the importance of profiling is probably the most, uh, most important thing, the most powerful thing that you can do with the iManifold platform to get the most information as possible. Now on the screen, in our upper right-hand corner, our gear menu or settings, we're gonna just take a look at something real quick here regarding our Tech Connect, um, connecting to the manifold, our Tech Connect, your account information, your tools, your troubleshooting on, multi-circuit on or off, uh, temp differential on or off, other settings and our help, of course. Right now, I'm going to leave troubleshooting off on this. We're going to go into uh, troubleshooting advanced features on another module, but today we're going to mainly focus on our uh, on our profiling of the system and get into some uh, basic reporting. So as you can see, the measurements that are on screen right now are uh, demonstration measurements. The uh, system that I have um, out, I didn't hook up to at this particular time, but our uh, pressures are, are shown, both low and high. We have our superheat uh, and, and subcooling, our airflow and our discharge line temperature. Now these are graphic uh, displays right here that are really nice to show because you can just glance at it and see that these measures are all sitting right about in the middle, except for our subcooling up, up here and drop down. I took the uh, the profile. There's no profile on it yet, so when we profile it, we'll see some we'll see some changes. This is what the system would would just look like as you hook up to it. Pressures are going, temperatures being read, and everything else. So all this information right here doesn't really give you much info as far as where the system's at and what it's doing until we profile. So let's go ahead and start with the profile here. <laughs> this particular system that we are uh, we're having demo information uh, piped in on is actually a 16 sear 410A uh, three ton system that is straight cool with a uh, TXV. So when we open up our our uh, profiling over here, we see all these quick profiles. Now a lot of these are already in your system when you purchase it, and these are defaults you'll see all these in here. Now, those can be edited. You can subtract those, uh, put in your own profiles, uh, name them however you like. We're gonna go in and, and go ahead and profile a new system right now so I can show you how to do this, how you can name it and save it. So we'll go over here to profile a new system. Mind you, after we profile the system, that information is saved. So anytime you go up to a similar system, all you have to do is select your quick profile. Then after that, we're gonna enter in our tonnage. After that is, is set to go, that's when we're gonna be really getting all of our information that we need. So right now it's asking us for the refrigerant. We have a full line of just about every refrigerant that's active out there right now. This particular system, we're gonna select 410A. It's gonna pop you up here on your refrigerant. Then our system type. This particular system is just a straight cool air conditioning. The meter and device indoors. We've got choice of the standard electronic TXV and a fixed orifice. This particular is a standard TXV. Benchmarking, we'll go into that on a, another module. That's actually where we can establish uh, performance on a given system. And uh, if you have another system right behind it, you can benchmark the performance on it. That way, when you go to the next system, that's exactly the same. You already have targets to look at and shoot for. Our condenser type, uh, custom condensers are used on primarily uh, low temp. So we'll just pick our, uh, our efficiency on our condenser right here. This one was uh, a 16 sear, so we'll choose 13 to 16 sear. Head pressure controls. Head pressure controls are usually not present on uh, straight coal or um, uh, heat pumps. Those are gonna go back into our refrigeration low temp applications. 
So we just skip over that and we go to our condenser, I mean our evaporator type. Um, most all the time, it's going to be a standard operation. So you're going to take a look and you'll see your design temperature differential or DTD will be at, uh, it'll be a 35 degree evaporator. Actually, 35 degree design temperature differential. Then we'll have our superheat and our subcooling. Now, these are adjustable targets depending upon the application. You can find your targets for the uh, for your for your subcooling on this particular system. Normally, it's on the nameplate. If not, we have uh, set in defaults, which is uh, 12 degrees of superheat and 10 degrees of subcooling. That's pretty much it'll make any system happy. This particular one, we'll just go ahead and leave it at 10 degrees. Now, nominal tonnage here, you'll see where nominal tonnage, I said about um, entering in nominal tonnage. When you put in the nominal tonnage on this particular page, as you can see, it's optional because it will not be saved to a quick, prof quick profile. If we did save tonnage on the quick profiles, you'd have a long, long list. You'd have the same basic profile for a two ton, a two and a half ton, a three, three and a half, four, and so on and so forth. That would just make your list kind of ridiculous to look at. So rather than that, you're just getting the regular uh, profile of the system, which is the refrigerant, the metering device, the configuration of the system, and the efficiency. Put in the tonnage after that, and you're in business. So right now, we're going to go ahead and create this quick profile, and we're going to hit submit. Now, when utilizing the system, that little submit button right here, this is your best friend. That's your best buddy right there, and I just kicked myself out of it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Go back in here and redo this. So, Eric, tell us what happened in case that happens to some other user. I was circling the submit button and it actually just hit it rather than uh, create this quick profile. When I said uh, create this quick profile and I hit it down here on the bottom, it just, it booted me out of it. That way you just have to go back and redo it. What do we have to do right now on when it's asking you to create a quick profile is answer it yes or no that we are creating a quick profile and we're gonna name it. So I'm gonna select yes. This will pop up then, create the quick profile name. Now you can enter the name of what you want to put. Uh, say you're working on McDonald's, um, you know, dining room McDonald's, you can put these things on there because it's the same one every time. But if it's just a general uh, profile that we're going to use, we can always use auto name. I use auto name here, and this will go ahead and bring us up a new name for this. So it'll be 13 to 16 SEER, AC, TXV. Now, if we went back up in, in here to our three bar menu and take a look at the profiles, as you can see, we have a new profile here 13 to 16 SEER, AC, 410A, TXV. Whatever uh, profile is active, it will highlight in the yellow. That way, you'll know exactly that this is actually working on this system right here. So, now that we have the profile in there, as you can see, now we have Targets. Those little tic tacs that popped up, those are actually targets for your low side pressure and your high side pressure. Now, as you can see also with the profile, all this, all these center gauges changed. Because with us taking our outdoor air temperature and we have our uh, supply and return temperatures, we can get all these targets. All these targets that we have here populate after that profile. Now to go into our tonnage, we're going to use that same menu over here on the, this three bar, or some people call it hamburger menu. We open up our burger menu, and we go down and select measurements, and we open up airflow and nominal tonnage. Now since this was a, a profile in here that we had, the nominal tonnage was already present, three tons. If not, it would come up blank. If you were working with a two and a half ton system, you would simply enter 2.5 and then go next and then submit. 
on this case we are using a three ton system so we would just select three hit next and of course that lovely submit button that's your best buddy hit submit and now we have our tonnage in now going through i'm going to get rid of something right quick just for demo purposes only While Eric's going through that a little bit, we want to uh, welcome. We have a few other folks that just joined us, and so thank you for for taking your Friday afternoon. Excellent. So now, as as what we're looking at on our measurements, our airflow and our nominal tonnage, we entered in three tons. We submit all that information. Now we're back in business here. Now, all of our active temperatures that we're taking off of our thermistors and our probes, we've got our suction line temperature, we have our liquid line temperature, discharge line temperature, and of course, our outdoor air temperature. Now, outdoor air temperature, when you're taking that at the condenser, make sure you're not getting any reflective heat off of everything. Don't, uh, if you're going to take it with an iConnect, for example, or if you're using a 9, 903M, the, the 12 foot long. Uh, air probe sensor. Don't let that lay on the ground to get a radiated heat or if the if the ground's been uh, um, you just wash the coil you know it's dried out and everything now but you've got that uh, that probe sitting near water or something like that let it just get good air temperature that's being brought in around the coil around the condenser itself. Just a tip to make sure you get your your accurate measurements. Now of course these two arrows right here this will scroll us across the bottom menus here. So we either go left or right, either way, we'll get information here. Now the 911M probes, your supply and return probes, they're gonna be picking up your airside measurements. So right here we have a return air dry bulb, uh, temperature of 75 degrees, return air wet bulb of 62.6, supplier dry bulb of 55 degrees, and a supplier wet bulb of 51.8 degrees. Now, as um, I pointed out a minute ago, the targets over here, these little tic tacs, well, all these targets are displayed right here across the bottom. When you scroll across, you get your targets menu. Our target suction pressure is 118. Target superheat is 14 and a half. Our target subcool is 11. And our I'm done, target subcool is 10 degrees, I'm sorry. And uh, target head pressure is 342. But like I said, on this particular system, your subcooling is the design that you take off the nameplate of the of the uh, of the unit itself. Straight cool, the target superheat, it'll be automatically calculated. You won't have any adjustment on that. Now, with our information that we have right now, with our supply return, all the information that we have, we can actually determine how many tons we're actually producing. How many how many tons of cooling we're producing? Our BTUs, 34,253 BTUs, are split between our supply and return, 20 degrees, 20 degrees split right now. Now, as you can see right here, our energy efficiency ratio is blank right now. We have to put in an electrical measurement to get our EER. So we're going to go back up here to our hamburger menu, our three-bar menu. Open that up. Go down here to measurements. Open up measurements, and we open up electrical right here. Now, as you can see, there's a uh, connect to multimeter. There is a multimeter that works with our system. They are available online through us. You can take your measurements, um, just connect it up. It'll give you a verified measurement when you pop the report out. We're going to go into a simple report here very shortly. But um, without connecting to that multimeter, you can enter in your, your electrical measurements manually. So you're going to just verify your configuration of the system here, whether it's a split system or it's a package unit, the phase, the voltage. So up here, we can change this over to a package. We can go three phase and 240 or 480 volt. Now, as you can see, when I do the selections on these, these do change. It's going to ask you for different legs on, on your voltage and everything. And it's very simple to, uh, to get your voltage measurements. It tells you which leg to measure it off of, just to make sure you get good, accurate measurements. 
when it's a three phase, you've got L1 to L2, L2 to L3, L3 to L1, just to make sure you're going across the right legs to get the most accurate measurement. I'll just switch this back over to split. Single phase and 240 volt. Our air handler and everything else, we are going to be using a, uh, um, a single phase air handler on this one. So anytime you even go through anything like that, it never hurts to hit submit to get the thing going. So putting in electrical measurements, we're going to go right back in here to electrical. And we're going to put some info in. You take out your your uh, your uh, clamp meter, whatever you're going to use. Get your first leg of measurements on your voltage. We're just going to enter in some info here, 121, 121.2. And then we're going to go ahead and get our current. Put our amp clamp up there, get some current off this thing. And mind you, this is on a split, so we've got the condenser out there first. Once we get that information in, we'll go to our air handler, make sure that our phase is correct. And we'll go ahead and put in voltage there. Pop in our amperage here. And submit. Now, as you can see, after you submit that, it'll change it into wattage, BTUs, divided by those watts, and you're going to get your ER rating. Automatically calculate it up. So now with the system running like this, for say running, this is, mind you, it's, it's demo data. At any time, you can go into this hamburger menu, open it up. Going down the line here, as you can see, you'll see this tab here that says System Performance. Open up your System Performance. And you've got a one page right there that's giving you everything. Your airflow, total external static pressure, if you're measuring it. Um, your measured capacity. Mind you, we had to go with uh, nominal BTUs of 36,000. Our adjusted target from our conditions, 33,749. We're making 34,253 and 253 BTU. So that's 101%, 101.5% of the adjusted due to conditions. So this system's running very, very well right now. You've got to hold um, your sensible, your latent, your calculated time is nominal, your additional measurements here. Um, a lot of people ask about enthalpy. There's your enthalpy measurements, your dew point temperatures. Over here on the other side, We've got our temperature split that we're actually accomplishing. Our target is 18.9. So our deviation from target on this is 1.1. We're actually 1.1 degrees better than our, our target split. So right here on our dehumidification, this is telling us how much uh, water we're removing, dehumidification. We're taking out 8.97 pounds of water per hour, which is just over a gallon. And here's our efficiency. Our condenser wattage, air handler wattage, total wattage, and there's our EER. Very handy screen right there to just, you get a whole snapshot of all the performance right there. Now, Bill, I'm gonna set up some other stuff here real quick. I know you had a couple of things to tell everybody. If you wanna get ahead and let everybody know what's going on, I'm gonna set up for a report right now. All right, we'll do that. I'm going to stop my screen share real quick. Hey, Lori, uh, why don't you go ahead and bring up the uh, the uh, uh, the schedule that we have coming for training sessions, so folks can see that. <clears throat> so, as you can see on our website, we have the uh, the next three sessions, and we have the uh, Tech Connect Live. We're going to hook it up to a system and uh, simulate what it would be like where a technician would be in the field and then somebody in the office or anywhere else for that matter, they could help somebody uh, work through some issues or just look at their data, stream their data and know that the job's done correctly. Um, again, we'll do more advanced reporting. That'll be in July 13th. And um, 
reporting is a cons constant uh, learning thing. Uh, there's a lot of reports and uh, the more you know, the more value you'll get out of the system. And, it, and how to make money uh, with the iManifold, that'll be July 21st. Um, that's a very important uh, uh, piece because really that's the name of the game of this. Uh, we have a very high-end product. Uh, we put a lot of money into it. It costs some money to buy it. And we want to make sure that everybody is aware of all the benefits and features so that it pays for itself quickly. So that's our real goal. So thank you, Lori, for that. And since it is Friday, uh, we want to give you folks a little bit of a, of a, uh, of a gift for showing up on Friday. I'm, I'm really impressed. There's so many of you here. So uh, if you would go over to Tech Talk and just we want to we want to know some things from each of you and if if you do this and we'll i'll tell you this but we're going to give away one of our bags so everybody today who, who we know who's here uh posts on tech talk so we can begin to understand a couple of things we'd like you to tell us how you liked it how 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 we could improve uh, no haters, please, just positive inputs, what we're looking for. Um, we'd like how we could improve, what, what, what additional topics could we cover that you want to know that we're not covering? Um, and what are the best times for you? So that, that uh, I know all you folks are working. And so what would be the best times for you? And uh, keeping in mind that we're working too, so. If you want 10 o'clock at night, Eastern time, probably not, but within reason, <laughs> within reason. So, uh, so anyway, go to Tech Talk and give us your thoughts. And if you do that, we'll send you a bag for showing up. And we well, yeah, That's nice. All right. Thanks, Just like when you said, the haters, they get one-way tickets to <laughs> uh, Arizona and they're going to have employment workers. <laughs> Yeah, and we're, we're not going to send a bag to those people, so you can just forget that. <laughs> All right, thanks. Take her away. Okay, I'm ready to go back. We're going to kick my screen back on here. And we got some stuff that happened here. You know, this system is broken now. Um, this is going to go into the, the reporting situation here. So... The system that we came up on, we gauged up, we put in a profile and everything. Everything's profiled out and everything. And, and this is just this is just showing, you know, basically a broken system. And I couldn't really make a whole lot of things happen because this is demo data. As you can see, um, our hand pressure is blown up here. Our subcooling went crazy. Our split went down. Our capacity went down considerably. And our ER went down considerably. So right now to report this, this is where we're going to get into it about showing a customer what's going on with the system. Let's see something right quick. Let's see here. So now we, we've got a broken system here. And we take a look at our measurements and I'll show you what I changed up. You know, I, I jacked up the pressure there. Um, made the uh, the uh, supplier much warmer and really messed up our electrical measurements. I jacked up the, uh, the uh, amperage of the system. So we're running very efficiently right now. But right now we're going to show the customer what's going on. So in doing that, we're going to go up here to our bar menu, our hamburger menu, open that up, and go into our projects and reporting. Now, mind you, what I've got set up here does not have a cloud account. So we're going to be limited on some things, but I'm going to show you some other um, some other reports on here that you can acquire when you get the uh, the cloud hooked up in. So right now we're going to start with a new project, and it's going to start asking us questions here. Now just mind you, all this information, especially starting from project ID and also equipment um, naming and everything else, this is how you're going to find your equipment once you do the reports and everything 
so you can find it in the system all over again. So there's a couple of points that are very important to put that information in. Otherwise, it's just going it, to, you'll lose the report. You won't be able to identify it. So our project ID, we're just going to go ahead and just put session in. Project job number. Now, this is not going to help you find it. This is just if you have a, say, a work order and you need to, to populate it, do it. If you don't, you can bypass it. Work to perform here. We've got a selection of equipment service, new install, um, retro commissioning, and preventive maintenance. So whatever you're doing on the job, you can select it, and we'll just say this is going to be a, a PM, and we submit this information. Now on our report sheet here, our project info, this is greened up, ready to go. Now these will green up as long as you visit them. Just like I said, it's not going to stop you. As usual, the more information that you can enter in, the better off you are. The better off, you know, if the boss man says that you need to put this in, do it to it. Our system profile. There's another big point about having profile and selecting your profile. You won't have to go through this again because when you profile the system, when you're up on it and getting to work on it, that profile is already populated in here. So now we'll go to customer information. Customer info, the name. Contact information, you put in phone number. Hollywood, Hollywood phone number. Email address. Now, mind you, when you put this email address in there, it will be an optional send to. So if it's a customer's e email address, if you want to send them a copy of this report, you'll see it at the end of, of uh, when you're getting ready to submit the information on the report, it'll have an option to go ahead and select it and send it. Now we can geotag the address. Now this geotagging goes onto the, um, the smart device itself. It doesn't have anything to do with, with where your iManifold is sitting, it's the smart device that you're using. So it's using your geolocation. And right there, that's where we're at right now. We'll use that address. It will automatically populate your climbing zone. It'll give you an estimated electric rate and it'll give you an estimated annual usage. Now, if you want to pinpoint that a little bit better, you can always contact your local uh, uh, utility company, ask them what the rate is, and ask them what a normal um, household, what the, the annual hourly usage is, and they'll be happy to give you that information. So that is an editable uh, values in here. So once everything's satisfactory, and you take a look at it, we submit. Like I said, submit your best friend. Always hit that button make sure it, it, it has an action to it. Now, as you can see, it'll give you a little review of the information that you, uh, you've gotten. Simply push back. As you can see, customer info greened up. We're ready to go to the next one. Equipment information. Now, this is another point where we, we, uh, we're going to select the system. And as you can see, we've got an equipment name or an ID. This is where you want to put a name in here because then you can find that piece of equipment in the list of, um, if, you're, if you're doing a search, that equipment name will come up, especially if you have a system where you've got, uh, or a job per se, that has three systems on one location. We can name that piece of equipment and, and say this is Session West. You know, this is on the west side of the building. It could have the, um, if you're working on a Walmart or something like that, you also would have um, basically an equipment schedule. So it'd be, R, you know, RTU 35, RTU 1, whatever. You can actually have that. You put the name of the piece of equipment on there, and you can also geotag the equipment. So you can see exactly where that piece of equipment was. Now, mind you, we're on Google Maps. So it'd be a factor of zooming in. And as you can see where this pin is, we can, we can move this pin around wherever we want. Now, if we find where that piece of equipment is, we can go ahead and drag and drop that pin right on it. And we say save location. That location is saved. Geotag is greened up. We can also take equipment photos if you like. That's going to go in and that equipment photo will be saved. 
You can drop in some notes if you want to or not. And here's where the system configuration, whether you're split or a package, all this other inf information here is if you want to put it in or not. Now that nominal tonnage, um, that's not necessary because we profiled it already. Now the rated capacity, if you do have a rated capacity and you know it, say the, uh, the system is a, a three ton nominal, you got 36,000 BTUs, but the actual rated capacity on that system is only 32,000 BTUs and you know it from an AHRI number or anything like that, that's always handy to put in there because then you're going to be comparing apples to apples. You're not going to be trying to reach 36,000 BTUs of the capacity when the system is only capable of doing 32,000 BTUs. There's a, a lot less um, explaining to do. How come, how come I'm paying for 36,000 BTUs and I'm only getting 32,000 BTUs? And, you know, and it just shows how, how close the system is actually running when you can compare apples to apples. We can select the blower motor type. We'll just say that this is an X13. We open up condenser information. You've got number of circuits, condenser phase, uh, condenser nominal voltage, and we can select our manufacturer. You've got a, a good list of manufacturers. If there are some new manufacturers out there that we don't have listed, We'll get them in there AS ASAP because there's always going to be a new name for something that comes up for some reason. We'll just use um, we'll just pop in carrier just for for grins on this one. Model number and serial number. As you can see, um, you've got a scan barcode right here, but it is showing in beta. The reason it's shown in beta, a lot of um, a lot of manufacturers when they put a barcode on something, sometimes it's their own coding and it's not truly the actual numbers and letters that are shown up below that barcode. If there's a model number, that barcode might read C123, and that's not a legitimate model number or a serial number. So some of them will code it properly, some of them won't. On serial numbers, a lot of time, when a serial number populates and it does put the code, it will put a character S in front of it. So that's, um, that's just the way they're coded. Um, you can get by all that because it's basically saying serial number is such and such. And we follow this all the way down through air handler as well. We can select the manufacturer being the same as the condenser. Model number and serial number. Now I just want to go ahead and put in just some numbers in here. So I want to show you where they populate. And we'll do the same for the evaporator. And enter in our information. Now all of our job information is greened up. We've got all the information that we need or want to put in. Testing and performance. We'll take a look at testing and performance here. We can view and input measurements. We can uh, view the performance. Now that's the same tab that I showed you earlier. On your main screen, if you select that, it's just going to pull up everything. And right now, we already took a, um, we've got a, a pretty bad off system. That's why we're not showing much performance on this at all. Now, you've got capture measurements in and out. Capture measurements in and out are running upon measurements in or when the system was broken or when you first approach the system. You haven't done any modifications. You haven't done any fixing, change the filter. You haven't touched it. This is just a system simply after it's been powered up, it's been running, it's stable, and you take a, a capture your measurements in. So we can look back by just simply going into the manifold, make sure we've got everything here. Oh, let's see here. I forgot to put in my tonnage. I kicked that out. And Eric, just to remind you, you've got about five minutes left. And if people okay. want to go over and ask questions, they're welcome to. Okay, we're just we're gonna kick this really quick. So we're capturing those measurements in. We have these measurements, and we can go to reports and checklists. 
and we'll take a look at this I-manifold report. So we want to report on what we just did. We select I-manifold report. Now just mind you, you've got measurements in and you have measurements out. The report that you're going to make is the measurements that you have selected. If you've already done your repair and everything else, you've taken a measurement out, you can select either one. This time right now, we've only done measurements in. Now we can select over here to email the report. Now remember, I put this uh, this other email, it was the same one that I've got, but I put this email in here and you can select it if you want to uh, email the customer right there on the spot. So we select it and we send the report. And that report is sent. We can also generate the report right here on site. So when we take a look right here and generate the report, And there's our report right there. So you have all your pressures, your temperatures, your air side measurements. You've got your electrical measurements, the system information, the model numbers and serial numbers of everything, our system performance, our very poor EER that we have. And we have all this information right here. Now we can exit out of this. We're going to do this real quick. While we're still in the project, we back up. We go back into our I-manifold, and we're going to go ahead and make all these repairs. So we're going to make a miraculous recovery real quick. Now, as I'm putting these uh, measurements in, we'll get some realistic numbers here. Now it looks we're all back into, into shape here. Okay, we're rocking and rolling now. Now we're, we're actually well over this. One moment. We'll go back in here to our projects. We capture our measurements out. And now we can report our measurements out as well. Also, we can take a look here at annualized savings. This is a report that actually, when you are signed up for the cloud, this 99 cents is uh, it's included. You don't, you're not paying by the report. Now, if you have standard cloud, I mean, uh, just standard, you can pay per click, but your value comes in when you, when you go by the month. It's only 15 bucks a month, unlimited reports. There's so much more to that. And, you know, we're going to have another uh, session going over our uh, cloud. But here's a quick preview of this report. As you can see, the customer information, actually, yep, sorry about that. Our customer information is here, your information here. This will have your, your logo as you want. You, you uh, upload your logo. Here's the system performance. This was before. When I broke the system at 6.6, .6, and then afterwards we're at uh, 18.25. Your energy consumption, everything else, you're looking at a savings of $890.71 a year. So you can actually show your customer what you did right there on the spot just by doing some corrective measures. Lots of really nice things on all these reports. And once you have the, the test in and test out information, you have all these reports available to go through. You can add in photos. 
uh, photos of the whole install. If you're doing a, a new uh, a new install, you can have photos from start to finish on that install. If it's a package unit up on the roof, you can take uh, pictures of the elbow, the curb, however the system's configured and going up. Anything that's on the inside, you can also take those pictures and, and uh, report them. So. Hey, Eric, that, good job. You, every time I learn something when you go through that, it's, it's great. Hey, uh, the question is, we got a question. Would you, would you actually be able to type in false information in these reports and get verified data? No, typing in, typing in information when it is not measured by the tool, the device, then you don't get a verified reading. Let me show you something. Um, Here's your nine manifold report right here that we did a, a test run here. Right. So as you can see, all these measurements here where it shows verified, these were actually hooked up to a system. So all that information there, when it's when it's all run through the tool, run through the device and everything, you'll get verified measurements. If it is manipulated by hand, if you decide you want to put some uh, special touches in on your measurements, those uh, those check marks will come off and they know they've been manipulated by hand. Cool. Now, about the uh, the electrical measurements, when you do use the, the, um, the Redfish meter, it will put in the verified measurements down here on your electrical as well. Oh yeah. Well, great. It looks, it looks like we're uh, we're we're about out of time. Uh, any final questions that anybody uh, has, please put them up. Uh, again, if if we don't, uh, if you can't think of anything now, or you don't want to uh, take the time now, please go to Tech Talk and uh, put them there, and we focus on that quite quite a bit, um, just so that that is a, a point at which we can all go there every day and try to learn from the user group what they like to see questions they might have so uh there you go that's a that's a very important one there isn't it eric <laughs> this right here this is your best one of your best sales reports that you have yeah you estimate uh, for repair replace the system the way it's running very inefficiently then after the repair you know they give you the estimate of what you're going to charge the customer it's fifteen hundred dollar repair and they're saving about 400 bucks a year just after the repair, and you know, the system's running better. But then replacing it with an 18 sear system, I think that's what we went for, yeah. We went to an 18 sear three ton. Their operating costs are then $683.27. Saves them a ton of money. They've got a, um, a replacement of those pieces for $6,500, and then they've got an ROI in 6.7 years. And that's just an ROI based on energy, you know, never mind the, um, the, comfort. Quality of how you, the comfort level in the house, you know. Comfort station, I mean, these were just example numbers, you know, we've acquired for some, from some guys out there. But, um, I mean, it could be considerably different, too, depending upon where you're at, you know, in the country. Because I know, I know my operating hours over here are ridiculous. You know, oh, some boy. Of the yeah, they are. Time. And you would see a different ROI. You know, if you got a lot of operating hours and you're going to run a nice, efficient system, you're going to be looking at 6.7, you know, 8, 10 years, depending upon the system. And some of the other ones where they're not run so much, you're going to look at an ROI in you know, 20 years. Right. Right. But, you know, the whole thing is about the comfort, too. You know, the comfort of the, of the yeah. customer. You know, with variable speed fans and things, quiet, uh, draft, less draft. Uh, it's... New technology has really made that um, a really important thing to think about. So, and there's a there's another example of the annualized savings report. There you go. And this was on a, a this was on a live system. So, I broke this one a little bit with 5.65, and then after that, yeah, up to 13.93, save the save the customer a thousand bucks a year. Perfect. I think we're out of time. We're a little bit over time, but uh, Eric, you did a great job again. Thank you very much. And thank you uh, one and all for 
for spending your Friday afternoon with us. So we look forward to seeing you again.